up, LK Mafia? It's your boy, Artie Kicks, and just like that, we back with another one. All right, y'all, so, I'm going to be honest. I actually wasn't planning on doing the video today, man. Uh, your, your, your boy's just been tired, man. I've just been tired, but i still been occupied. I got some stuff that I'm working on. Stuff that's going to be on the website. Y'all, I, I think I just gave you a little clue, but I don't want to get too uh, deep into that right now, but let's just say something coming. Something is coming. But yeah, I'm about to get ready to go hang out with a few other YouTubers. I don't know exactly what they're working on, but they want to include me in it. So I'm going to go hang out with them shortly. And I was like, yo, let me knock out a reaction first before I dip out. I got about two hours before I'm supposed to meet up with them. So uh, hopefully I have enough time. I don't, I don't think I'm going to get there um, at the time I'm supposed to, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try. But anyway... I've been sitting on this video right here for probably close to two weeks now, and it's called 10 Best Movie Clues You Totally Miss. But for those that know me, I love my movies. I love my movies, so we're going to see. We're going to see. Hopefully, I've seen these movies that they're talking about. And if I have, hopefully, I didn't miss these clues. But I don't be paying that close attention, so I might not have gotten any of these. I ain't even going to lie. But we're about to get into this. I want y'all to comment down below which ones y'all didn't miss when y'all watched these movies. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Plot twist is an effective way of keeping audiences on the edge of their seats. But not every surprise comes completely out of the blue. Filmmakers just can't help leaving a hint or two for all to see. Even if it's just the viewers paying the closest attention who catch them. Well, okay. you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Here are Screen Rant's 10 best movie clues you totally missed. Yeah, back to the Future, Twin okay. Pines Mall. Seen the this. first Back to the Future ends with a bit of a twist. It reveals that the life Marty McFly leaves behind in 1985 is not the same one he returns to. His actions in the past have caused his entire family history to change for the better, but you don't have to wait until the final sequences for that surprise. When Marty rushes to the parking lot of Twin Pines Mall to save Doc before he's killed, it's revealed to have changed its name to Lone Pine Mall. The name change is a result of Marty running over one of Farmer Peabody's prized pines when he first arrives in 1955. Wow. It's the first clue that he altered the timeline instead of preserving. What? Nah, I definitely didn't catch that. I was so young. Come on now. There's no way I caught that one. I remember the name of the mall being different, though. I remember seeing that. Uh, I, I distinctly remember that when I was a kid, but I didn't know what caused it. Okay, so that was one. You got me. The first clue that he altered the timeline instead of preserving. 21 Jump Street, a okay. familiar fleet. Love it. Undercover officers Schmidt and Jenko are given a simple mission. Infiltrate and bring down a high school designer drug ring. Yep. Finding the dealer is simple enough, but finding his supplier in Kingpin proves much more challenging. Mm -hmm. But it didn't have to be. After the first two take the drug while at school, Jenko notes that it tastes like Cool Ranch. What was that? Barbecue Cool Ranch? Have fun. Just a few moments later, Coach Walters appears snacking on, you guessed it, Ranch. Cool Ranch Doritos. Damn, I didn't catch that. Shit. Walter turns out to be the operation's mastermind, explaining where that flavor came from. The officers might have spotted the clue if they weren't too distracted by their own tongues. Put your tongue back in your mouth. Your that mouth. was nasty, bro. Like, <laughs> he put his finger under this man's tongue, man. Did y'all see that? He put his finger out of this man's tongue and then he stuffed it in his mouth. Oh my god. I hope he sanitized that finger. Put your tongue back in your mouth. Tongue in your mouth. And close it. What are you doing? Stop it. Reservoir Dogs. Big Tippers. After a jewel heist goes horribly wrong, Quinta Tarantino's cast of thieves are convinced that there's a rat in their midst. The survivors are left to I'm not sure if I've seen this. To find out which one of their team may be working with the police. A collection of bottles hints that Mr. Orange isn't on the same page as Mr. White or Pink. But the undercover LAPD officer actually lets the secret slip in the very first sentence. First he changes his mind to fit in with his colleague. Just convinced me. Give me my dollar back. Then, when the group asked who didn't tip for the breakfast, Orange immediately squeals. Who didn't throw in? Mr. Pink. Mr. Pink. This clearly shows he doesn't subscribe to the same code as his partners. Mm. If only they'd caught it, the movie's ending might have been a lot less messy. Oh well. Oh, now I want to see that movie. I gotta see that movie now. It looked like a good one. Classic. Oh well. Fight Club. Flashes of time. I know this when one. When the narrator learns that he and Tyler Durden are actually the same person, yep. it blows his mind. But eagle-eyed viewers weren't caught completely by surprise. In the film's first act, the narrator begins to see quick glimpses of Tyler as he battles his insomnia. It's the first suggestion he's simply a figment of his imagination begging to be unleashed. If that wasn't enough, 
Tyler later calls the narrator on a payphone that doesn't accept incoming calls. And it rains. Saving the big twist from attentive viewers was obviously not a priority for director David Fincher. He is Jack's spoiler alert. <laughs> I get it, answer. I kill Jack. The Sixth Sense. Nah, I didn't catch that stuff in the um, in the Fight Club movie, but I definitely got to go back and see it. The Sixth Sense, an unfriendly ghost. Discovering that Bruce Willis's character was dead the whole time is one of the greatest twists in cinematic history. The movie immediately warrants a second viewing, where viewers learn the twist wasn't necessarily a total surprise. I see dead people. It makes sense for Crow to spend plenty of time with his patient Cole, but it is a little strange that he doesn't address any other human after the opening scene. At one point, he arrives late for an anniversary dinner without his wife even acknowledging his presence. The clues are subtle enough to go unnoticed the first time, but on repeat viewings, they're impossible to miss. No, I did not notice that. Uh, another movie, I was very young, but damn, now I gotta go back and watch that. What the fuck? I don't remember that movie, like, at all, other than the kids seeing dead people. What the fuck? Yo... That was kind of a spoiler alert for me right now. I'm not even going to lie, even though I've seen the movie. Oh, crap. I got to see it again. Like, real soon. Crap. Shutter Island, a glass half full. The movie's story of a federal marshal pursuing a killer in a remote mental hospital is turned on its head when hero Tony Daniels is revealed to be a patient acting out an elaborate fantasy. It's a shock. This is going to be a spoiler alert for me. Fuck. I haven't seen this movie. God, this was one that was on my radar, but I never got around to it. Crap. This is about to be a spoiler alert. An elaborate fantasy. It's a shocking twist, but viewers should have known that Teddy's experience was less than reliable. When a patient requests a drink during her interview, the glass she drinks from is non-existent and returns only when it's been completely drained. Teddy's fear of water may be actively censoring what he sees and doesn't see. But regardless, mm. it's just one of the clues that shows the investigation is not what it seems. The usual suspect. Interesting. That's crazy how they come up with concepts for movies and ideas. I swear people be dreaming that stuff because I be having weird dreams like that. Sometimes I have to wake up and write them down. I started working on a, a movie script that's kind of crazy like that. Probably like, oh, how many years ago was that? Maybe like three years ago? I'm like a quarter of the way through, but I got to finish this. I got to find time to finish this script. Oh, man. Hopefully, if all of this works out and pans out well, maybe I'll have somebody to pitch it to. But nobody call me now. I don't know. I don't I don't trust. <laughs> the usual suspects. The truth is gold. Everyone was floored to learn that the unassuming verbal Kent was really the criminal mastermind Kaiser Sozik. But hints were sprinkled throughout this mysterious crime drama. In the film's opening scene, the faceless Kaiser lights a cigarette with a gold lighter before setting the fiery blaze. Later on, when Verbal leaves the police station, one of his belongings is a gold cigarette lighter. One watch, gold. One cigarette lighter, gold. The same one used in that first sequence. It's a minor detail before the far larger twists are revealed, meaning deductive viewers realize the truth long before the characters in the story. The big Interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie. Dang, man. They got so many movies I want to watch now. Characters in the story. The Big Lebowski. No strike, he's out. Since the film's starring duo spends most of their time dismissing their fellow bowler, Donnie... Forget it, Donnie, you're out of your element. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Viewers might not notice that every time he's shown bowling, he gets a strike. Until his final game, that is. He seems as confused as anyone when he leaves pin standing, but exits the bowling alley to face off against a group of violent nihilists. Show me what you got, nihilist. I fuck you! Where he suffers a heart attack and dies. Turns out, his last bowl was an ominous piece of foreshadowing. What would have happened if he'd thrown a gutter ball? The Prestige. Interesting. Look to the birds. A single trick lies at the heart of this tale of rival magicians. Hugh Jackman's character desperately tries to learn how Christian Bale's Borden can transport between two points instantly. He eventually recreates the trick by copying himself, drowning each time as his new copy appears to wow audiences. In the end, Borden's explanation is his twin brother, not actual magic. It's a secret discovered early on by a young boy unconvinced by a disappearing bird trick. The boy sees what the audience doesn't, but even his rival's horrifying loop of suicides is explained using the same dead bird. He's alright, he's fine. Look at him. But where's his brother? Mm, yo, I really want to see that now. That's interesting. I haven't seen this movie. Ooh. Interesting. That's cool. Look at him. But 
The Dark Knight Rises, The League's Mark The third of Christopher Nolan's Batman films finds Bruce Wayne surprised and devastated. He discovers his corporate ally and lover Miranda Tate is actually Talia al Ghul, yeah. daughter of Batman Begins villain Ra's al Ghul. But her membership in the League of Shadows is foreshadowed long before she confesses it. Bruce makes note of a triangular scar on her back, which is never explained. It's very similar to those covering Bane's head, implying a link between the two. Some have argued the scar resembles the brand of the League seen in Batman Begins. But whatever the case, having a villain covered in scars suggested there was more to Miranda than met the eye. But those are our picks for great clues hidden in the background of movies. Are there any we missed? Hmm, dang, I, I didn't even realize that about the scars. Yeah, because I remember distinctly when he rubbed on her scar, and I was like, yo, there's something to that scar. But, like, they never said anything. At least I don't remember. Do y'all remember? I don't remember them ever, like, mentioning anything in regards to the connection with her and Bang. But, I mean, obviously there was a connection there, but, huh, interesting. Very, very interesting. I guess that was one of those subtle clues that you were just supposed to pick up yourself. But which one of these did y'all miss or did y'all know when y'all watched the movie? Or did y'all catch? Did y'all catch any of these clues when y'all watched these movies? Comment down below on the ones that you did. Or was you as surprised as I am? And how many of you also feel like you need to go back and watch some of these movies that you might have missed before? Or even some that you had seen already? I know there's probably like five of these out of ten of these that I need to go back and either rewatch or watch for the first time. But yeah, you know what time it is. If you like this reaction, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more. As always, the link to the original is going to be down in the description box below. If you haven't already, make sure you follow your boy right here on the Grandman Twitter at all the kids. Till the next one.